So an odd thing has happened over the past, say, two years. We seem to have graduated from a world of electric cars that, for lack of a better term, drive like golf carts. Now, yeah, there's the appliance that is the Tesla. Wonderful in a straight line, but if you want to turn, there is a problem. Then about two years ago, we finally got an electric car that drives like a Porsche. And then something very interesting happened this past summer. An electric car that really wasn't an electric car. It was a luxury car first that happened to have an electric propulsion system which was all fine and good. But now the folks at Alfred, Melcher and Grossesbach, they have begun tinkering with it. So we need to kind of go back to the drawing board and understand what that means for the EV world. Admittedly, the concept of tuning an EV, especially for an in-house OEM tuner, is relatively new. So what is going on here? Well, the folks in Alfotherbach, what they do is they take an EQS, and not the 450 that's two-wheel drive, they take the all-wheel drive 580. So this is a formatic that is the only way it is on offer. And they make some significant changes, really in two areas. Number one, they borrow a page out of the Tycon book. So there with the Turbo S and the Turbo, the inverter for the rear motor is different than in the 4S or the basic Tycon. But you can't just stop there. It's much like tuning an Alpina. There we've driven the B7 and the B8. And yeah, Alpina tunes that 4.4 twin turbocharged V8, but you can't just stop there. They add a different intercooler, a couple of different coolant overflow reservoirs, engine oil coolers, and a transmission oil cooler. And the idea there is to focus or at least remedy the increased operating temperature of a higher performing vehicle. Same concept in an electric vehicle, just in a different format. So they do change the cooling in the EQS AMG. Now that's all fine and good, but how does it impact output figures? There it's pretty sizable, 649 horsepower and 700 pound-feet of torque. But there they had to add a couple of different loopholes, the biggest one being an overboost function. And that it goes up to 751 horsepower and 752 pound-feet of torque. Then there's the battery, it really hasn't changed, 107.8 kilowatt hour, which translates to 277 miles of US EPA rated range. Then there's the whole reason for being of this vehicle, and that's the performance figures. Zero to 60, 3.4 seconds, and VMAX electronically limited to 155 miles an hour. This is not lightweight, 5,854 pounds, or depending on expression weights and measures, 2,655 kilograms with that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, kind of what we expected here, yeah. This makes up for the lack of, I wouldn't say lack of power, but this is kind of the difference we were looking for from the 580 to this. And here's the thing, the 580, it wasn't slow. That thing was downright fast. This, it's more immediate. It's delivery of power. It's not quite what a Taycan Turbo S is where that literally rips your face off. And even some Teslas, they also rip your face off. Right now I'm in Sport Plus. Let's go back down to comfort and drop the hammer. It's, it's not a huge difference in the way it delivers power, but notice you don't really hear anything. There are different sound profiles depending on the drive mode one is in. So let's slow down here. We've got a lot of space in front of us, a lot of space in back of us. And let's go back up to Sport Plus. And there are two ways to do this. You can do it over here, which is very confusing with a haptic feedback button. And then you have to work with the screen or just with a toggle switch on the steering wheel. Thank you very much for that. Now, I'm gonna shut up, listen to Sport Plus mode. It's kind of cool. Now, in order for us to press on, we need to be honest with ourselves. And what exactly does that mean? Well, this being almost 6,000 pounds, this ain't a track car. So let's look at driving dynamics based on that information. Uh, this is more about the ride quality. I'd go so far as to saying that some of the changes that AMG made to this thing 
make this a more well-rounded package even driving it on a divided highway like this or driving it around town yeah it's sharper around corners but this is not something you're going to carve canyons with there's good control over most planes of motions like for example i'm pushing it a bit hard on this road i can feel a little bit of flex in the back i can feel a little bit of lean in the rear end of the car considering the weight of the vehicle my guess would be that it's something to do with the motor in the back being heavier than the motor in the front. Now with that, let's you and I do a recap of what's underneath the EQS AMG. If you remember from our EQS 580, it's a multi-link front and rear. In the case of the EQS, it's a four-link multi-link setup in the front. Now something interesting about this specific vehicle, the AMG flavor, now depending on what region of the world, it's either the EQS AMG or EQS AMG 53. However, whatever the name, the bushings as well as the mounts are specific to the AMG. Does it make a huge difference in the way the car drives? I would say that's probably the biggest difference in the overall ride quality change. There's more composure. So if you were to look at this on a spectrum of compliance here and composure here, an EQS, even a 580, it's a bit too much compliance for my liking. This, even on a rough, not perfect road, this is definitely more composure, but it's not to the point where it's going to push your intestines out of your body. Now, something interesting about the car we're driving, this one has the bigger wheels and tires, so there are two different options. There's 21 inches and 22s. You would think that would have a huge impact on the ride quality. Here from the 580, we drove not really. It's still very much the same overall flavor and the way the thing executes its ride quality. So I'd say this is kind of a push and oh yeah, it looks cool, but it doesn't take away from the ride quality that normal 22s do. If you remember in our 580 episode, uh, the steering, it, the feedback was not good. The weight was not good. I asked for a change in the AMG. And it's clear someone was listening because there's definitely good weight to this. The feedback is good. It's as direct as an electric car can be. Now, putting aside all of that, the biggest change here is the rear wheel steering. This is something Mercedes-Benz seems to be doing and taking as their technological advancement of all these large, and even the new SL we drove, actually we're gonna drive that next month. I can't tell you about it until next month. The rear wheel steering ranges from 2% in the SL to 10% in the S-Class. In this, it's 9% huge difference when using it in like parking lots, low speed maneuvers. However, in situations like this, this is where rear wheel steering pays more dividends most people don't understand. Let's say for the sake of discussion, I wanna change lanes. This guy just passed me here. I can do this at high speeds and I have a good amount of stability. This is a vehicle that is very long. Normally you wouldn't get that kind of response. No, it is not that time to play your favorite game on the options game because while we have a contestant, we don't have any pricing. You see, the backstory is this. The opportunity to drive this as well as the new SL was at an international driving program. They flew the cars over from Germany, but they didn't fly over any pricing. So the only thing we got was the list of options fitted to the car we are driving. So what you and I can do is take these options and then take a stab in the dark as to what the price will be when they finally price the car, say, end of Q1 2022. So the car we are driving is a 2000, I believe a 23 EQS AMG, maybe a 2022, I'm not really sure on that part. This car is above the EQS 580. So if we take a stab in the dark, the 450, the two wheel drive was about a hundred grand. The one we drove, the base price, the 580, the all wheel drive dual motor, that was about 120. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and make a guess that the base price of the EQS AMG in the US will be about 140,000 US. Now the car we are driving is fitted with a stunning color, the Cardinal Red, which is part of the Mercedes Manufacture program. It is stunning. It is the best color I have seen on any EQS, whether it's a 580 or this one. I'm guessing this is like a probably $2,000 paint job. Then the inside, the black with the space gray Napa leather, that is fitted as standard. I think the two-tone is maybe what's optional here. Uh, then there is the brown yacht design walnut trim with the aluminum lines. Stunning, I believe this was about a $1,000 option in other EQS. 
Then there's the 22 inch AMG turbine wheels. I'm guessing this has got to be a three to $5,000 option. And then there's the exclusive package. This has like different uh, levels, different flavors. In the exclusive package, it comes with an atomizer and an air purification system. That I'm guessing probably $500 to $1,000. Then the AMG performance steering wheel. I've told you in many episodes, why is it optional in this, what will probably be about a $140,000 car? I've got to pay extra for the knob for the driving mode. That's kind of ridiculous. Hopefully that's fitted as standard and this was just a misprint. Then the faux suede headliner, they call it the black microfiber headliner. Very nice touch, but there I'd like a different color. You know, you got this great color on the outside, maybe like a two-tone saddle in black and have it like saddle on the headliner. That would really pop. Then this one, you know, it's think about what's going on in the world for the past two years. This one has the optional HEPA filtration system. Then we have to press on to the only other factory option fitted to this vehicle, which believe it or not, a 110 volt home charger is not fitted as standard to the EQS AMG. Now that opens up a larger discussion, and this is really something that surprises me about the EQS range in total, not just this one. It's not 800 volt architecture like a Taycan or even that Ionic 5 we've driven. Now the big difference there, it's faster charging with an 800 volt architecture. This one's a more traditional system, and yes, it'll accept up to a 22 kilowatt charger. However, the one that we're paying extra for, I'm guessing it's gonna be a couple hundred bucks, is a 9.8 kilowatt charger. Which brings us back to the main event of this pseudo round of the options game, if we could even call it that. What do we think this thing is gonna cost with all these options? I'm guessing somewhere between 150,000 and maybe 160,000 US. If you said I had to put money on it, I'm going with 160,000 US and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. An electric car with carbon ceramic rotors. Now in the Porsche world, that doesn't sound funny. In most of the EV world, that sounds kind of odd, but here in the AMG world, I guess it's something we've got to get used to. And a couple of things going on. Number one, the brakes, you know, they definitely work. I can't tell you that I've had a lot of time to do panic stops and test this vehicle because I got super minuscule amount of time with this vehicle. So we're gonna have to get this back at the hangar and spend more time to understand the brakes. But in reality, the pedal feel, that I did get some time to understand. And in reality, the pedal feel, it's okay. Like it doesn't have the on off switch that an electric vehicle has, but it doesn't have the proper pedal feel that a carbon ceramic rotor system would have. So I'm gonna accelerate and I will really wanna hit the brakes here. Man, I can't do so much on the freeway. I just, I don't get that feedback. I don't get the, it is braking performance, let's be very clear here, but it's just the feedback that needs to be dialed in a bit more, and maybe that's just some teething problems in adjusting these things to electric vehicles. Now with that said, let's you and I blend in with the traffic and discuss two items that are not necessarily related to the way the vehicle drives. Number one, you can see on the screen here, I've had this in front of you throughout the entire episode, there are different graphics in the EQS AMG. Notice I got this comes straight from the AMG world. I can change the vehicle here. I can even see an AMG versionized of the uh, energy flow. So this is here and here. But the biggest difference, remember we talked about the fancy huge head-up display in the S-Class and the EQS? That's still here, but they've taken these graphics and applied it to this huge like Costco-sized head-up display. It is magnificent to drive with in this car. I'll admit, I kind of like the idea of an EV with a tune, but this, is it a full fat AMG experience? There, I'd say no. Rather, it is a much better execution of the original EQS platform, because if you remember when we drove the 580, very good, especially that it was its own personality. It was a real luxury car before being an EV but it left something to be desired in the steering as well as some of the ride quality. This fixes all of that. Now granted, it goes past the goalpost. It makes it a little bit stiffer, which brings us to the wish list. And here, I'd like to take the learning from this car and apply it to the basic versions of the EQE and any other EQ platform vehicles that cascade down the line. Fix some of the steering and the tuning of the driving dynamics in the basic models from this AMG experience, and then perhaps make the AMG experience in the EQS and the other ones 
a bit more full fat. And then of course I have to add my usual, we need more knobs and toggle switches to make that lovely design on the inside a bit more user friendly and safe. But this is only one man's opinion. So I'm going to turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All One Word. Moto Man TV All One Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I would love to humbly request your help with the algorithm, but frankly, it just pisses me off. So if you are not getting notifications on the YouTube platform, unsubscribe, resubscribe, but more importantly, follow us on all of our socials. Moto Man TV All One Word, Moto Man TV All One Word. And then, of course, you can share these episodes with all of your friends. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.